Hi boys and girls, welcome back. It's Miss James here again. I'm ready to share the next story, which also celebrates women because it is Women's History Month in March. This is called Joan Proctor, Dragon Doctor. The Woman Who Loved Reptiles, and it's by Patricia Valdez, and it's illustrated by Felicita Sala. Back in the days of long skirts and afternoon teas, a little girl named Joan Proctor entertained the most unusual party guests. Slithery and scaly, they turned over teacups. They crawled past the crumpets. While other girls read stories about dragons and princesses, Joan read books about lizards and crocodiles. Instead of a favorite doll, a favorite lizard accompanied her wherever she went. Each day after school, Joan retreated to her bedroom where she studied lizards, snakes, and turtles. She took careful notes, just like a scientist. And on the days Joan was too sick to attend school, tiny toes and eager eyes cheered her up. The reptiles were quiet and watchful, just like Joan. For her 16th birthday, Joan received a most curious gift, a baby crocodile. I wonder who gave her that baby crocodile. She tied a little ribbon around his waist and took him for a walk. She even brought him to math class one day. The students shrieked, the teacher recoiled. Apparently crocodiles were not welcome at school. When Joan grew older, she skipped the parties and dances with her friends. Instead, she sought out the curator of reptiles and fish at the Natural History Museum. There, Joan and the curator talked snakes, snake scales, size, shape, texture, patterns, and even evolution. Sometimes, Joan smuggled in her crocodile to the delight of the curator. He knew right away that Joan was special. But soon, these carefree days came to an end. England was at war. Women took up jobs left behind by men. The curator found himself short-staffed at the museum, so he hired Joan as his assistant. Joan flourished at the Natural History Museum. As a scientist, she surveyed the museum's vast collections and published research papers on pit vipers and pancake tortoises. As an artist, she created exquisite models and drawings for the reptile exhibit. When the curator retired, Joan took over. Men returning from war were surprised to find a woman in charge, but times were changing and Joan was leading the way. A few years later, the London Zoo decided to replace its old, outdated reptile house. The zoo director asked Joan to design a new home for the animals. Joan knew exactly how to keep reptiles happy. She added elaborate lighting and state-of-the-art feeders that provided hot spots to keep the cold-blooded animals warm. She brought in plants and created artwork that mimicked each animal's natural environment. Joan took extra care designing one enclosure in particular. By this time, stories had emerged of a fierce man-eating lizard with a long forked tongue living on the faraway Indonesian island of Komodo. It was rumored to be 30 feet long, faster than a motor car, stronger than an ox. They called it the Komodo dragon. The stories didn't frighten Joan. She dreamed of studying the dragons up close. On opening day of the new reptile house, visitors packed the zoo. They gawked at the geckos, they peered at the pythons, and they marveled at the monitors. Good alliteration right there. But then they reached Joan's special enclosure. They gasped. Two seven-foot-long lizards stared back at them. Real-life dragons. Although the visitors were thrilled, Joan was concerned. One of the Komodo dragons, Sumbawa, did not look well. She moved, sorry, to the shock of the zoo guest, Joan entered the enclosure. She moved Sumbawa to the reptile clinic with the help of six nervous keepers. The dragon let Joan clean a sore in his mouth with no fuss at all. In fact, he thanked Joan by licking her face. Joan thought Sumbawa was brave. The keepers thought Joan was brave. News of Joan and the Komodo dragon spread. Reporters flocked to the reptile house with questions. Had she ever been bitten? Was she afraid of the dragons? What kind of woman runs a reptile house? Joan wished the reporters would ask about the animals instead. Joan cared for each and every creature in the reptile house. From daily health checks to delicate surgeries, her dedication and talent could not be matched. Scientists all over the world read about Joan's research, her clinical skills, and the success of the new reptile house. She became an international sensation. 
The Zoological Society of London invited Joan to present her Komodo dragon research at a scientific meeting. As Joan took the stage, she wheeled out Sumbawa, sitting freely atop a large table. The audience squirmed in their seats. Joan stroked Sumbawa's head and fed him a pigeon. He ate it in one gulp. Sumbawa wandered through the audience as Joan explained that the reports of Komodo dragons were greatly exaggerated. They could grow up to 10 feet, not 30. They ran fast, but not as fast as a motor car. They could be fierce, but they were mostly gentle. When Joan finished her presentation, Sumbawa returned to her side. The audience erupted in applause. Joan's passion for reptiles never waned. For the rest of her life, she could be found walking or riding through the zoo with Sumbawa by her side. And just like when she was a little girl, Joan often hosted children's tea parties at the reptile house with her scaly friends. Sumbawa was the guest of honor. And I'm gonna let you get up close. This is a real life picture of Joan Proctor. And in this bottom one here, it has her holding a little, little reptile of some sort. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I did. We'll see you next time.